Something is amiss. The wagons from Avernus just never turned up. Vassabunt lay, its glory now stained and faded, a faithful child in the looming shadow of Nupraptor's retreat. Something is amiss. The wagons from Avernus just never turned up. Nupraptor's keep lay west of Vassabunt. I would seek to cut the cancer from its heart. Nepraptor had servants. One day, one escaped the keep and stumbled into our village. Mad he was, and his skin and hair white as a sheet, scared out of his wits. The wind carried screams from the west. I couldn't help but smile. Someone else in this world was suffering more than I. Don't venture around here without a good blade at your side. You thank me for it. Good day to you. I ain't never been up there, nor would I ever. Accursed gypsies, bringing their wicked magic. Norsgoth will never be the same. The gaping moor of Nupraptor's retreat rained upon Nosgoth all his pain and misery. The disease begged to be cleansed. The mentalist Nupraptor was renowned through Nosgoth for his tricks of the mind, telepathy and telekinesis. Pilgrims travelled from all across the land seeking the comfort of his lies. I sought not his wisdom, but his life.
You dare intrude upon my sanctuary? Can I not mourn in peace? Leave, leave, and let my solitude be complete. I came upon one of Nupraptor's serving girls, catatonic with fear, choking out half words through bloodied, broken teeth. Although tempted by hunger, I stayed my hand, allowing her to tell her story. She spoke of her lord, Nupraptor, driven to insanity by the brutal slaying of his beloved Ariel. She spoke of his self-mutilation, sewing his eyes and lips shut to deny the outside world. Fueled by despair and hopelessness, he turned his magic on the circle, infecting their minds with his madness. Nupraptor cared for nothing now, save his pathetic self-pity. Scars such as hers would never heal. Death would only be a mercy. <laughs> Oh, please, help me, kind sir! <gasps> The cretin squandered life and left it seeping on the floor. Such waste was a travesty. Perhaps Nupraptor needed to be taught a lesson as to the value of blood.
magic extends into very exotic disciplines, such as the manipulation of time. I am able to slow time down so I can move about quick as a wolf, while all others move as though they were mired in mud. When conjured, the energy bank permits me access to mass amounts of magical energy for a brief period of time. However, when the moment passes, I will be drained of all magic, unable to cast even the simplest of spells. From the depths of the retreat's eye sockets, I viewed Nosgoth in a different fashion. The glass seemed to warp the image and taint the color, <laughs> as if Nosgoth needed assistance in making its corruption apparent. Should this object strike an enemy, rot and decay would instantly eat their flesh and leave only a pool of blood and tissue. For a time after, the toxins are still active and therefore lethal to the touch. So, Malik, have you come to fail the circle once more? Leave, Paladin. I do not need your protection. Come, Cain. Come, share my pain. <laughs> So, this was the mentalist Nupraptor, this broken, pathetic little man. Yet crippled as he was, he would not yield without battle. Very well, old fool. If it is death you seek, I will not deny you.
pride of her beloved will convince Ariel that I have accomplished my task. Alas, poor Nupraptor, I knew him well. Well, not really. The mace is amongst my most useful of weapons, for it merely stuns my victims, allowing me ample time to feed. I placed an Upraptor's head before the Pillar of the Mind and watched on as it dissolved into the stone. The Pillar accepted its offering. Thus, it was restored. Nopraptor was but the genesis. Forever tainted by his madness, the circle was beyond redemption. For them, absolution lay only in death. In me, they would find their deliverance. But first I had to defeat their shepherd. Malik, defender of the Nine, lay in a keep to the far north, past Vasabunt. It was time for me to test the wrath of the Pillar of Conflict. Death in the circle breathes life to the pillars. For every pillar there is a token. Only with these shall they be restored. But to reach a warrior, you must first breach his ward. Find Malak and destroy him. Only then will the circle fall.
Unclean. Be gone. Save yourself. Unclean. The blood of ages flows so sweet. Come, drink from us. Your magic energy recovers more quickly, for our blood enhances. Tis the plague, my lord. It eats at our bodies. There is no hope. Years ago, word reached us of a strange pestilence that had laid siege to a few remote villages far east. But the rumours failed to prepare us for the horror that was the plague. Worms and maggots fed upon his festering skin. The scent of tainted blood seeped through the wounds upon which they feasted. Pity. Such a waste. Good blood gone bad. Corhagen, my home. The finest city in all of Nosgoth, rich in vanity and conceit. I had no delusions as to the welcome I would receive. Death and disease stalked these streets. Bodies lay most in the very spots in which fate had taken them. A perfect homecoming. Tis the plague, my lord. It eats at our bodies. There is no hope. Bring out your dead. Bring out your dead. Ah! <laughs> 
this spell cloaks me under a protective aegis. Whatever spell is cast at me will be reflected back at the caster, leaving me unharmed. It will only last for a short time, however, before leaving me vulnerable once more.
Lower forms of undead fall swiftly to deception. With the bone armor, they are not as eager to challenge me.
Tis the plague, my lord. It eats at our bodies. There is no hope. dangerous poisons. Quite useful with all the filth I find myself surrounded by. allows me to exploit the petty prejudices of man. Minor grievance would escalate to murderous rage, and oh, the sweet terror when the spell wore off and they saw their hands covered with their neighbor's blood.
The Heart of Darkness. The Heart of Darkness. Eviseration. Let fate choose my enemy's demise. sword.
Malik's bastion, perched defiantly on the mountain top, black as night against the blanket of snow. What manner of man would choose a land so harsh and utterly devoid of life? <laughs> 